So moving on to our second delegation, uh, Chris Stroh, uh, Chairman of Sustainable Community Development. that I believe has far-ranging implications for the community and its residents. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Chris Phelps and I've been a resident of Chatham now for about 12 non-consecutive years. For the last four years, I've been working for a family-owned uh, water and vacuum service truck company uh, based here in Chatham. Over all those years, uh, I've come to really appreciate the community, the wilderness that surrounds it, and the people that makes this place what it is. I've recently acquired an empty lot in town, which I hope to build a house upon for my wife and I to take another step in our journey together and our life here in the peace. I'm here today to challenge the affordable housing issues that many Canadians face and add my voice to that to those that are seeking more affordable and sustainable housing options. There have been many reports published by the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, BC Housing, BC Nonprofit Housing Associations, Stats Canada, and many more that have outlined the status of affordable housing, household debt levels, and rental housing indexes. After reviewing the information in these and many other publications from around Canada, I have come to be understand better the economic uncertainty that many Canadians now face. I'm not going to bombard you with statistics today. This presentation is about creating choices, real choices, uh, for the community that can be expanded on an application to address these very issues. What I hope we can accomplish here today is to open up a dialogue about a change that this council could approve that it could, cur could encourage future affordable housing development projects in Chatham. This change would also enable a more acute alignment to the long-term community plan of economic and environmental sustainability that was adopted by council in 2010. Uh, if you could please hold your questions to the end of the presentation, I will address any that you have at that time. I encourage council uh, to add Chatham to the list of communities around the country that are changing the way they tackle affordable housing shortages in Canada. Like the communities outlined in the <coughs> compendium from the FCM that I brought with me today, Chatham has a real opportunity to be identified province-wide as a community that is taking action to solve some of these problems. My proposal. <coughs> I ask that this council look into the amendment or removal of zoning restrictions that prevent a person from building a home less than 1,001 square feet within Chatham, whether by lowering the square footage minimums across the board, the removal of minimal, or minimum requirements, or by the creation of a zone within Chatham where property developers can build residences under 1,001 square feet if they so choose. I'm not asking for you to make this change based off my request alone, or that you make this decision today. I ask that you review the material I brought for you today and weigh out the benefits to yourselves and make a fact-based decision to make this change when you agree that it is indeed beneficial to the people and community of Chowin. Perhaps ask the people of Chowin yourselves and see what the view of the people is. Do they agree that people should be allowed to build a home less than 1,001 square feet within town as long as it meets BC building code requirements? <coughs> I believe with the information provided by institutions that deal with affordable housing, sustainability, and climate change, that zoning bylaws like this are out of date and a good way to encourage low or not a good way to encourage low impact alternatives. In addition, zoning bylaws like these have put home building out of reach for many Canadians due to the associated cost of building and maintaining a larger home. I'm not proposing that we only allow smaller homes in Chatham or that we allow shanty towns to appear within our community. I ask only that the people who wish to build a smaller home be afforded the same opportunity to do so within Chatham Granted, it is, it is constructed to BC building code requirements. Smaller homes are less expensive in a variety of ways, <coughs> construction and associated expenses, taxes, heating and maintenance, and repair costs. In addition, residents of smaller houses tend to live and encourage a less cluttered and simpler lifestyle that reduce ecological and environmental impacts. 
This reduction in household expenses can lead to more disposable income that can be put into the local economy, put towards education, saved or invested into small business ventures that this country was built upon. Increased disposable income allows debt obligations to be paid faster, allowing, credit to, or, or allowing a person to build their credit easier. Financial security leads to a more prosperous household and by association, a more prosperous community. Smaller homes have a smaller footprint and can be incorporated and designed to fit the topography of, topography of the land easier with less alteration to the natural beauty of the land. There is more green space left over after the construction of a smaller home for the residents to add flower or vegetable gardens that can provide them with fresh produce and gardens full of vibrant flowers for the local garden contests. Smaller homes may be attractive as second homes and additional sources of income, giving rise to more financial security and more investment to the area. Smaller home builders tend to value de uh, design over size, utilize dual purpose features and multifunctional furniture. They incorporate techno technological advances of space and energy saving equipment and waste reduction appliances and processes. Utilization of energy saving appliances matched with lower heat energy requirements means less strain on energy infrastructure and less money to utility bills. Allowing for smaller homes to be built in town opens a broad variety of possibilities to this community and has multifaceted effects on both the economics of this community and the prosperity of the citizens that live here. It provides options for those who are interested in investing in the area, creating a more diverse background of people and ideas working towards a more prosperous future. I believe that this type of change is a more sound, economic, and environmentally sustainable way to not only encourage investment to the community, but also take a logical, measured approach to a financial uncertainty that faces our young people, our single mothers and fathers, our dual parent families, our seniors, and the children of tomorrow. Before I conclude my presentation today, I want to let you know about a project that I am and have been working on my, for myself, uh, this community, and the people affected by lack of affordable housing. Over the course of the last few months, I've been working on the design process for a home I wish to build for myself in town. My intent is to construct a two-bedroom home utilizing an alternative and more environmentally sustainable method of construction. This building method has been tested by experts in Canada and around the world, surpassed code expectations and attained code approval in many countries, and offers serious benefits such as fire resistance, mold resistance, it does not attract insects or rodents, it has passed seismic testing as well as hurricane force wind testing and has had extensive structural uh, strength tests that make it far superior to stick framing in certain designs. This method has the potential to reduce cost per square foot dramatically as it can be built easily with local materials often found on the build site itself. In many cases a team of three is all that's needed to build a home in this way. The method I'm speaking of is flexible form round earth or earth bag as it is also known. There's a great interest around the world and an amazing amount of interest within this community about this building method. I've been in contact with experts, builders from around the world, and I've received much support, advice, and case study information from those people. I have already received my house plans from Dr. Owen Geiger, PhD in Social and Economic Development, the founder of the Geiger Institute of Sustainable <laughs> Building. And I'm in the process of getting those house plans approved and certified BC Building Code compliant by an engineering firm that specializes in conventional and alternative building methods. I have a large amount of information directly from the experts about this method that I can show you and discuss with you and I look forward to doing so. I've had meetings with the building inspector and fire chief as well as the director of engineering and public works and the chief approval officer. And I've received good feedback from all of them and I look forward to working with them, this council and this community over the next few months to make this house project a reality. I've already received pledges of material donations from a local aggregate quarry, as well as other members of the community. I've received pledges of volunteer help for the project from several people in the community, and I've been receiving more support daily. One of my goals is to host several workshops throughout the build process for families, individuals, and youth of the community. Through the workshops, I will be able to engage more of the community and create more awareness of the methods I will be using to develop the property. Earthbed construction methods are very adaptable and have applications well beyond simpler complex housing structures. Houses both large and small, garden beds, greenhouses, sheds, garages, art studios, saunas, animal shelters, and even swimming pools have been made out of this method. I've been asked by various online groups and from people within this community to make this process as open as possible as there is an overwhelming amount of people that are interested in changes like these. 
In response to these requests, I aim to track everything about this process, so I will have a complete picture of everything it took to build this home. I will then be able to provide this information, financials, bill journals, pictures and videos of the project, to not only them, but any groups like the FCM, BCMPHA, BC Housing, and so on, for review and comparison to their metrics of affordable and sustainable housing. This spring I will be attending a few workshops to further expand on the database of information I have been gathering during this whole process. If I am successful in proving its viability under BC building codes, and this council makes the decision to allow less than 1,001 square foot homes within Chevron, we would have created two more options for housing in the piece. The options I have presented to you today are very real and are already being pursued by many municipalities, communities and individuals. Chevron has the opportunity to become a leader of sustainable development in BC and can make a big impact on obstacles that face many Canadians. I thank you for your time and the opportunity to speak with you today and I welcome any questions you may have. Well, thank you, Chris. Do we have any questions? Quick question. What's your plan for this, the lot? Are you looking at a multi-family building? Or no, single, single residence. Single family. Yeah. Yeah, what I, what I intend ultimately is once I get through the whole construction process, like I'm going to be going through the permitting process and making sure it's built to BC building codes, but at the end of the, the whole project, I'll be able to break down to a cost per square foot analysis. Now, if, if you folks actually do change the zoning to allow under 1,000 square foot homes within Chatland, you match up the two, and we've created a whole new affordable, sustainable housing program within Chatland. One more, just what is the square footage of the one you're looking at? The square footage of the house that I'm actually planning on building is 1,193 square feet. It's over the 1,000 square foot minimum. Uh, so I'm not really asking for that for myself. I'm asking for the, uh, that particular change for others. Okay. you have a question? Uh, yeah, the earth bag system. Are banks willing to finance and mortgage that the same as conventional building? That's something I'm working on, but I believe so, yes. As long as it can be proven to be engineerable and built to BC building codes, I don't see a problem. It's still a question, though. What's that? It's still a good question. Um, what about house insurance? House insurance, same thing. I have to have meetings with them as well, just to, to clarify. I believe that with the fire resistance aspect of this method, I think uh, insurance should be one of the smallest parts of the problem, really. Okay. Anybody else? I have a question. Sure. Your, your smaller houses that, that are below, uh, are under a thousand feet, are they, are you planning to build those the same way with earth build beds? I'm just asking for to make that change so other people can build conventionally as well. Uh, right now there's actually no process from what I understand to go to the Board of Variants to allow for under a thousand square foot. Uh, from the meetings that I've had already, I believe there is a process for over the maximum square footage uh, requirements, but there is no process for under. So that's really one of the things I'm offering as an option really, is if you could even create a board of, uh, uh, sorry, just the board of variance, sorry, uh, for under, that would be great as well, right? Okay. But right now there's no process for that. Okay. I have some questions. So, Go ahead. So you're not, you're, are you a contractor or you're not no. a contractor? Okay. Oh. So you're just doing this, okay. Yeah, no, I'm just looking to build my own home. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions for Chris? Okay, well, thank you very much. That was very enlightening, Chris.